morning doves. So today I thought I would do something a bit different and um, for this week's video I decided that I would show you guys how I do my morning stretches um, for my fibromyalgia. Long story short, fibromyalgia is where your your muscles basically and all of the connective tissue that surrounds all of your muscles it just gets tight um, and it causes a lot of tension and a lot of pain and um, it can be anywhere on the scale from mild to severe but one thing that is really really important for people with fibromyalgia is actually to keep active um, in whatever capacity that they can um, but one thing i've realize is fibromyalgia has been a recent diagnosis for me over just over the past couple of years. A couple of years ago is when I um, we figured that out. And since then, um, I have developed a morning routine and it's just a really easy, quick way to like have a gradual wake up. I think this would be a good set of stretches for anybody that wants to just kind of limber up a bit in the morning. You definitely don't have to have fibromyalgia to benefit from these morning stretches. It's a really great way to wake up slowly. Honestly, I'll do the first half of them, or I'll do even most of them under the covers still, um, just to be cozy, but I'm going to be on top of the covers today just so that you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. Anyways, I should be stretching while I'm talking. But um, that's what I was saying was my ideal is that I actually wake up and do a little bit of reading while I'm doing these stretches with my lower body um, while I'm still laying down on my back. Um, to be completely honest with you though, usually I'm on my phone. <laughs> so um, kind of whatever, you might already be doing stuff where you're just kind of laying there in bed for a minute. Um, and throwing in some of these stretches or all of them especially if you have fibromyalgia uh, could be really beneficial for you. So I basically do a thing where I start from my toes and I work all the way up to my head and my neck. Before having, di having been diagnosed with fibromyalgia uh, I was naturally quite flexible so I might be I might have better range of motion than um, maybe the majority of people with fibromyalgia just because I, I started out at a really flexible point. In order to get the full benefit of a stretch, it should be, and this is for anybody, not just with fibromyalgia, you should hold the stretch for 30 seconds at least. I have noticed longer than that, sometimes it can be really beneficial for me personally to hold for 60 seconds, but then I've also noticed that if I hold it for that long, sometimes it aggravates the fibromyalgia. So that leads me to the really important point that you really just have to tune into your own body. Um, definitely hold for at least 30 seconds, but anything more than that, just pay attention to how your body is feeling. Everybody is different. You see I've moved to pointing my toes upwards and I've chosen each of these stretches specifically for fibromyalgia simply because it is so important to stretch each individual muscle group. So I'm going to show you the stretches a bit faster just for the, the sake of this video, but hold for 30 seconds. So after pointing down and then up, I point back down and then out to the side and I'm stretching just the inside, mostly the foot muscles there but also a little bit on the muscles inside the lower legs. And then I will point my toes inwards. You can, maybe you can touch them together, maybe you can't. But just the point is to stretch the outside of these muscles here. Pretty sure these are called your peroneals. Um, and it'll stretch a little bit of your tibialis too on the side here. So we fully stretched out um, all directions around the foot and the ankle muscles and that works a little bit up into the lower leg and calf muscles as well. The next thing I do is I tuck my legs under. If you can't go fully under like this and you still want to lay in bed, 
you can still get this stretch by turning over and just holding a leg up like this. Holding the leg up like this. And you'll get that stretch on the quad there with that as well. So after that, the next one is the butterfly pose, except you're laying down. And this will stretch the inside of the thighs as well as the pelvic floor muscles, which are very important to learn how to relax those and also have that be incorporated with your breathing. So when you breathe in, relaxing the pelvic floor muscles and when you breathe out, you tighten them. And it's really good to just learn how that circular breathing not only works through your abdomen and your chest, but also all the way down to your pelvic floor muscles. So again, I remind you, hold each of these poses for 30 seconds. But we're gonna move on to the next one, which is thread the needle. It's another yoga pose. You bring one foot up onto your bent knee, put your grab behind your thigh there. And then you can use that to pull into wherever the stretch feels good for you. And then you'll repeat this on the other side after 30 seconds. So after you thread the needle, you're gonna put your arms out to the side and do the bent knee twist. You'll notice I scooted my hips over to the opposite side that I would be turning. This just helps make sure that your spine is in alignment, that your spine is as straight as it can be while you're twisting around it and you're bringing your arms out to the side straight like this. Um, try to keep your shoulders against the bed and your knee touching the bed. That is the full extent of the stretch. So please do whatever feels comfortable for you. If your shoulder has to be more up, it's totally understandable. If your knee can't touch the bed, it's totally understandable. Wherever it just feels like a good stretch for you without being painful or too painful. Um, and with your arms out like this, you're also stretching a bit of your pecs and the connective tissues in your arms. So then you'll do the other side. Again, this is stretching the glutes, but also the lower back and up into the spine. And um, common thing to happen with this is my spine actually just popped in a couple places which is really nice so now we move up to the sitting positions this is where we're going to be stretching the back of the legs as well as further up into the spine and even all the way up to the base of your skull so what you want to do is actually slump and lean forward and this will stretch the back of your legs and then all the way up through your spine you tuck your head in Get that stretch going all the way through your neck as well. Lean forward to get more of a stretch. And in order to get a stronger stretch on the back of the legs, you can bring your toes up. So imagine this like a rubber band going all the way around your body like this. In order to get a stronger stretch on the back of your legs, you have to pull the rubber bands on the opposite side. So if I grab those rubber bands, pull my feet up, then I get the stretch on the back. And then adding in the slump, that rubber band now goes all the way around my spine, all the way to the back of the legs, back of the spine, through. So we're gonna stretch the sides out. We're moving up the torso here. So we're gonna go to one side and reach the arm out. Make sure you keep your neck, your head straight. Don't tilt it down. Don't look up, just keep it straight. Try to keep your spine bending, but not twisting. Kind of lift your, push your head up to just try to really help stretch out that, that spine up there. This is a good one that often kind of pops my neck a little bit. And when you're done stretching there for 30 seconds, you bring your arm back up as you sit up, hold your hand out like this, 
to the side, and this right here. Really good stretch for those tight muscles that go all the way through your hand, again, like with a rubber band. All the way through your hand, all the way up through here, and then into your neck. So I'll show you that on the other side now as well. And if you can't stretch all the way down, like with your elbow against the bed, you can put your hand down on the bed and reach over like this the same way. In order to get a good stretch, I gotta put my elbow on the bed for me personally. So do that same thing. And then when you're done, you'll reach your hand up over and out like a talk to the hand motion and you bring that out to the side while your neck stays tilted to the opposite side. Again, just getting that stretch all the way through the neck, all the way through the hand. And after you're done holding that, we're going to stretch up the entire spine by lacing our fingers together. We're going to be slumping again, tilting our head down, resting, not pushing, but resting your hands on the back of your head that weight of your arms um, will be enough to just give that little extra push in stretching your spine. So you'll slump and then let your arms relax over your head. And then what I do is I'll hold if I feel a stretch there. And then I'll just straighten my spine a little bit. See if there's a stretch there. Straighten my spine a little bit. Wait for the stretch there. And then straighten my back all the way and wait for the stretch there. So what's that that is doing is changing where the rubber band is stretching. So the more bent I am, the lower down it's gonna stretch. As I straighten my back, that stretch is gonna move up my spine until it gets to being completely straight. And then that stretches, that angle point is gonna be at the top of my neck. So it's like um, like a pivot point almost. So pivot point down here, as I straighten, that pivot point changes along my spine and allows to stretch out each of those individual points along my spine. And then with the back completely straight, that pivot point is just at the neck because that's where it's bent. So here with back straight, this right here is a really good stretch for your neck. This is great to do in the office chair as well. If you're at your desk for a while. And then what I'll do is I'll actually rotate my head to one side. Stretch there as well. This will stretch down into the shoulder a little bit on the back here, but it will also get the, by rotating, you're also stretching the muscles more on the back and side of your neck. So we'll go to one side, we'll go to the other side. Also gets right up into the muscles at the base of your neck here. These can get really, really tight for people whose eyes get tired when looking at screens for too long. Um, and even just having like a desk job or if you have to be like really focused on something small for a long time, people that work artistically with, with small things or jewelry makers, um, th these would be really good stretches for you as well. So I'll just kind of roll around to see where I can find any tightness and then hold there. And then I'm going to put my hand on my head, stretch out to the side. Again, you're just using the weight of your arm. My arm is completely relaxed right now. Just using the weight of it to give a little bit of an extra stretch to these neck muscles here right now. And then if I need a little bit more stretch, I'll also push down my shoulder like that. I don't know if you can see the, the tension in my neck here, but it's getting a good stretch. And then you'll do the same with the other side. Your spine bent, but not rotated. And then the last stretch for the spine 
I will rotate around. Use your knee as a brace. Fingers behind you on the bed as a brace. Keep your back straight when you do this. When you rotate along your spine, keep it straight. Um, and then just kind of push that as far as you can. Comfort. Make sure your head is as straight as possible too. When I say your spine straight, I mean all the way up through your neck. And try to keep your head looking straight forward, not tilted up or down. You want your spine as straight as possible so that when you twist it, you're getting all of those very specific little muscles and ligaments stretching along your spine. So I will put my hands under like this so that my fingers are pointing behind me, my arms straight. And this kind of just stretches along the arm here again as well. Um, and for this one, I'll actually tilt my head back so that we can at the same time stretch the front neck muscles. And I might rotate my head a little bit to the sides. See if there's any tightness in the muscles in the front and front sides of my neck that need some extra love. And then I will tuck my hands so that was this way. We're going to stretch them this way as well. So I'm just tucking my hands. Again, my fingers are pointed behind me, but this time I'm not rotating my hands. So hands under and then under. And then against the bed as kind of a brace point. And I might go and tilt my head any more directions that I feel like it needs for this last stretch here while I'm stretching the front part of my arms. So this one with your hands tucked under this way is going to be stretching these muscles here as well as the connective tissues here that can get tight. Also really really good for anybody that has to work at a computer for a long time. Again working with your hands, um, small things, typing, writing, all those things that can get these muscles really tight. Um, and then another thing you can do here, I'll turn here so that you can see this better. Um, if this isn't quite enough of a stretch for you, you can rotate your arm out so that the inside of your elbow here is facing forward. And this will create even more of a stretch along these muscles here in your forearm. And then lastly, we need to stretch out the shoulders a bit really get my shoulders stretched out. This is also just like, you know, most people just stretch like this. And this is a great one too. You just push up, kind of stretch your spine up. You know, the classics are good. You can lace your fingers behind your back. And then I'll just rest my head on the bed in front of me and bring my arms up over and around like this. And this will stretch through your biceps and your shoulders. And just go as far as is comfortable for you. So I really hope that this video was helpful for you guys. Remember if, whether or not you have fibromyalgia, these stretches can be good for anyone, honestly. It's a really great way to wake up in the morning and take a few minutes to um, get these stretches in and um, to start your day off in a healthier way that can help you feel more limber and less likely to cause injury. You know, it's really important to do stretches before you exercise or you, do, or you do any of that stuff. But especially with people with fibromyalgia, there's just so much tension there that um, normal daily activities can be enough of a push to cause injury. So these doing these stretches can actually help prevent injury. Um, they'd also be really great for anyone that has um, very, uh, physical job. So people that do manual labor that have to push their bodies harder, wake up with tension, um, tend to get, you know, certain injuries acting up, you know, low back pain or tension or things just get tight or the, because what happens is you get tight and then your body isn't able to stretch with these different motions. And so it'll pull and tug and it'll just get injured. So doing morning stretches is incredibly helpful. And this series of stretches just stretches all of the different muscle groups and that's why it's so important. So 
Um, it could be beneficial for anyone, and I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Remember, if you know people with fibromyalgia, even if you don't have fibro, if you know people that do, please share this video with them. I'm sure it will help them a lot and um, help them prevent injuries as well. So, um, and so remember to share this with your loved ones, and um, I really do hope that it helps a lot of people. So thank you guys so much for sticking around with me while I did something different for this week's video. And remember that you can reach out to me anytime in the comments down below, or you can DM me on Instagram at allthings.jenny. And thank you so much for being here. I love you, doves, and take care of yourselves. Feel free to take a screenshot of this as a quick reference guide for the morning stretches routine.